Welcome to r slash petty revenge, where no revenge is too small. Having dinner with my family, this story was brought up that I think belongs here with a mix of justice served. This happened to a family friend, let's name him Sean. His parents are American, but he lived in South America when he was born. He was also raised there naturally, so he grew up speaking perfect Spanish, though he obviously didn't look Hispanic. Blonde, green eyes, fair skin, etc. Fast forward a couple decades. He's now in his late 20s and moved back to the US where he's lived since his teens. So both his Spanish and English are perfect at this point. He goes to a certain Mexican fast food place, let's call it E. coli, where employees add your ingredients down the line and you pay at the end. As soon as he starts ordering his food, two of the workers, both Hispanic, start to make fun of his hair, his skinny jeans, and essentially his entire appearance. I remember him mentioning them specifically calling him a marica, which essentially translates to bundle of sticks, and also them wondering where his balls fit in those tight jeans, and concluding he probably didn't have any, all while subtly laughing and still maintaining a professional demeanor as they fill his bowl. Sean was able to stay composed and quiet and acted completely oblivious to everything they were saying and just carried on down the line ordering. By the time he gets to the cash register, the cashier, who was not one of the two employees, rings him out. That's when he calmly asked the cashier to call over the two employees, which they did since there was no line at the time. When the employees come, wondering what was up, Sean says, in English, I really appreciate the service both of you provided. Your commentary was also top notch. Now, if you could be so kind. And then, without missing a beat, he says, in perfect zero accent Spanish, Me pueden llamar a su jefe, which translates to, could you call over your boss? Sadly, I wasn't there, but he says their reaction is a moment he will never forget. The manager gave him 10 gift cards to the restaurant, as well as not having to pay for that meal. And living close to that specific location, he never saw those two employees again. Then we have a contribution from Orca C down in the comments. This reminds me of a story about my granny and granddad. My gran grew up in a tiny village of Scotland. She didn't speak any English until she started attending school. They spoke Gaelic at home. She moved to Canada as a nurse and met my granddad. They were later married in Scotland and honeymooned on Skye. While there, they stayed in a small bed and breakfast. The entire weekend, the woman who runs the place talks about how she thinks they aren't actually married and what a promiscuous woman that makes my gran. My gran doesn't respond all weekend. When they leave, she compliments the woman on her beautiful house, how clean everything was, how delicious the food was, and thanks her for such a memorable weekend. All in fluent Gaelic, of course. Apparently, the woman was absolutely speechless. And then, we have another contribution from Creep Shaming. My cousin used to work where you can get grand slams for breakfast, and she looks pretty much exactly like your friend. There was a Hispanic family that would come in all the time and complain about the food so they would get free meals. She took their table one day, and because she was fluent in Spanish but didn't look good, they were talking mad flack about how easy it was to pull the scam on the restaurant right in front of her. My cousin listened in and let her manager know. When she asked how everything was and they started complaining, she started responding in Spanish. The manager brought over their check to make sure they went to the counter to pay. Guys, come on. If you're gonna speak another language expecting no one else to know it, don't pick Spanish, which is like, what, the second or third most spoken language on planet Earth? Our next Reddit post is from BB8. So my friend, we'll call him John, is a very good reader because his parents wouldn't let him entertain himself in any other way when he was young. This parenting also made him into a bit of a butthole. So John is in English class and this girl, we'll call her Kim, was annoying him repeatedly over multiple classes. So he decides how to get some revenge. At the start of class, you have to read a book for 10 minutes. John notices what book she was reading and bought it. He then reads the whole book over the weekend just to then spoil the book to her, which is part of a book series. Nothing big, but I found it funny. Then someone asked, he couldn't have just looked up what happened on the internet? And OP replies, <laughs> I said he read a lot of books. I never said he was smart. Our next Reddit post is from Nerdy Skeleton. So I'm a senior in high school this year, and ever since seventh grade, there's been this one girl who's always asked me for answers and cheated off me when she could. This year, we had to take a civics exam as part of our graduation requirements. There's only one retake, and if you fail, depending on how many credits you have, you may have to go to summer school and then receive your diploma. 
Anyway, I was sick on the initial test day, so I had to go to the retake. Guess who was there and sat next to me? Yep. So the test starts, and I can tell she's cheating off me because she's not being subtle about it. No big deal in my opinion, you gotta do what you gotta do, but then she starts smacking her gum. I'm a misophoniac, which is someone who has a strong hatred of certain sounds, and all I can see is red. So at about the 50th question, I start putting all incorrect answers. I finish up and pretend to double check, she doesn't do the same. She gets up to turn it in and I start to erase. When she sits down, she sees I'm changing my answers and she quietly begins to panic. I finish and turn it in. A week later, I'm in the college and career prep office turning in a senior packet and she's bawling her eyes out with her parents in the counselor's office. Something about summer credit recovery and a civics test grade. Our next Reddit post is from Jenny Bassan. For some ironic airport profiling context, the guy in this story is a young, college-aged white guy in shorts. I'm a brown woman in winter gear, silly with pom-poms. He's sitting in my gate, but we're not on the same flight. Mine boards in like 20 minutes. A few minutes after I sit down, in a seat he'd made almost unreachable with his big, exposed, unwinterized legs, he asks if I'll watch his bag for a second. I know this isn't good practice, but I usually say yes anyway, since 99.99% of the time, people really do need to use the bathroom and there's no harm in doing a solid while they do a solid. I said sure, but pointed out that my flight boarded soon. He said, yeah, yeah, I'll be back in a second. He left and I went back to scrolling my phone. I didn't time it exactly, but eventually my flight started boarding and it was a tiny one, so it boarded fast. Now I'm in a pickle, but I'm also mad because where the F is this guy? At this point, it's been at least 15, 20 minutes or more. More than enough time to do number one or number two. Grab food, do whatever. It's the F gates at O'Hare, so everything is really close together. Even when I do this, I make sure to head back as soon as possible, just out of courtesy. Not to mention that airports expressly don't want people doing this. Yet, if I walk off and leave the bags unattended, they'll get confiscated and he'll have to do a song and dance to get them back, probably missing his flight. F him for putting me in this position, and honestly, F him for not facing the same consequences I probably would have if I wandered off and abandoned my luggage. I made the call. I told the gate agent I'd been watching the bags and the owner hadn't returned. She said fine, the police would pick them up. I boarded my flight and we're about to take off. He's probably cursing me at the gate right now. If he had diarrhea or an extremely premature heart attack or some real reason to delay, I ask his forgiveness in heaven. But who knows, maybe I stop the next neckbeard airport bomber. In any case, I let my petty flag fly today. Man, this is bizarre to me. Is this a thing that people do often? I would never leave my bags with a stranger in an airport. That's just stupid. Our next Reddit post is from Odysseo. I didn't really take part in this, but it just happened right in front of me and I thought it was great material for this sub. Context, I work at a big family owned dealership which has a high-ish turnover, which means we are constantly hiring new salespeople. When they're hired, they get a box of 500 business cards for free and after that, they have to pay for their own. Tim, not his real name, was hired a little over a month ago and on his free box, he has 499 cards. The boxes never have 500 exact. They usually have over 500, not exactly sure why this happens, but the boxes are slightly bigger. So they tend to have over the 500 cards that it's supposed to have. So the story. I make the order of the business cards with X company. A week ago, Tim asked me to order him a box and said to me, and make sure you don't screw it up like last time. My box better have 500 business cards. I took this as a joke since I don't know him, so I just told him, sure. A week goes by and the guy from Company X came to deliver the business cards. I paged him so he could come and pick up his cards. So he came and in a really annoyed tone asked me, what the F do you want? I told him that Company X was here with his cards, so he needed to go and speak with them to retrieve them and pay for them. He gave me an even more annoyed look, huffed, and went, and this is how their conversation went. So, you're the idiot that can't count, huh? The guy from Company X said, excuse me? 
Yeah, on my last order of business cards, I had 499, not 500, you moron. Oh, I see. I'm sorry about that, but you know, they never have 500 cards. We don't really count them. We just put enough to fit the box, which usually ends up being over 500. Well, I don't give a flip. I'm paying for 500, so I better get 500. You better count my cards and make sure I have all mine, or else I'm not paying for them. He has to pay for them regardless, by the way. The company guy already looked very annoyed with him, and he sighs. I don't really see the need for this, but sure, let's count them for you. He started counting them in front of Tim, and the count ended up being 516. Ah, I'm sorry about this. I'll just burn these 16 extra later. No, no, leave those. You owe them to me because of last time. You said you wanted your 500, so sorry, can't do. You're only paying for 500, so that's all you're getting. After that, he threw the extras in the shredder box. Tim looked angry, and I felt happy for what I just witnessed. After that, Tim just left and went to smoke with a very annoyed face, and the company X guy looked like he was going to have a nice rest of the day. The malicious compliance move would have been to give him just one of those 16 cards and then burn the other 15. Our next Reddit post is from Wildchild. A little bit of background. I had been working at a restaurant for about 18 months as a food runner. It was an okay job, but the company was going corporate and they had really stopped caring about their employees. We were super short staffed because of this. I was one of only two food runners and normally they have six to 10 people hired. And I was considering quitting too because I was tired of being mistreated. One week in October, I got really sick. I had a low fever, was congested, had passed out earlier and I had double pink eye. That week, I was scheduled to work Tuesday, Friday and Saturday. Legally, you can't handle food when you have pink eye, so I called out of work on Tuesday. My manager told me it didn't matter if I had pink eye, and if you don't come in, you'll need a doctor's note or we may have to let you go. The manager didn't care if I was contagious. She would rather have me work while sick than risk me taking a day off I didn't need. I wasn't surprised I would need a doctor's note, but it really pissed me off that she threatened to fire me for not coming in. That wasn't the company policy, she was just abusing her power. I ended up going to the doctor the next day. At the same time I turned in my doctor's note, I turned in my two weeks notice. This meant the restaurant was down to only one food runner. To be honest, I probably would have kept working there if my manager wouldn't have threatened to fire me for calling in sick. A few weeks later, a friend told me they still hadn't been able to hire someone new, which made quitting so much more satisfying. Our next Reddit post is from NedRagB. So I'm at Costco in need of dog food and it's ridiculously busy for a Monday. Barely any parking spots until I spot one at the end of the lot. I make my way down the aisle and I'm about to turn into the parking spot when a lady runs over the curb and almost hits me to take the spot. Thankfully, I tapped my brakes in time or she would have taken off my bumper. I look up and she's shaking her head and wagging her finger in a no motion at me. WTF? I was like, okay, I'll just wait for her to back up since I'm obviously turning into the spot. She doesn't. My girlfriend is with me and was pissed that the lady wasn't budging. I gave her my Costco card and just sat in the aisle in a face off with this lady. She goes inside, gets the dog food, comes back out and loads up the car. She then pushes the cart into the spot we were waiting for and hops in the car. The look on the woman's face was enough to give me satisfaction for a week. She had to get out and move the cart so she could park once I reversed through the entire aisle. Worth it. How does this lady have the audacity to drive over the frickin' curb and then try to scold her like, uh, I can't believe you tried to take my space. Kids these days have no respect. OP didn't describe the other driver at all, but don't you just know that she's a boomer? Our next Reddit post is from Parkhead Boy. So my driveway is on the corner of my street and has recently had double yellow lines put on the road to stop people parking there and causing issues for buses, etc. As I was preparing to leave my house yesterday, I noticed through my door that someone was blocking me in. This doesn't happen that often, usually delivery drivers, so I opened my door to have a look. 
A middle-aged woman is locking her car door and walking away, so I told her that she couldn't park on double yellow lines and block my car. She proceeded to tell me that she had a disabled badge and was popping to the shops to collect a parcel. I explained that even with a disabled badge, she couldn't park there and that I was leaving anyway, so she was blocking. I also explained that there's disabled parking at the shops. Now, this is the point that really started the petty revenge. She told me that she didn't want to park at the shops and wanted to park there, that she always parks there, and that she can stay there for three hours if she likes using the disabled pass, and that if I take up any more of her time, she'll call the police before striding away from me. I checked the laws, which said she can park on double yellow lines, but only if she's not an obstruction and is 15 meters away from a junction, which she wasn't. So I decided that if she wanted to be that petty, then so be it. I got in my car and reversed it down my driveway until it was five centimeters away from the driver door. When she returned 10 minutes later, the shops are a 30 second walk away. She asked me to move my car, to which I explained that I was trying to leave my house, but unfortunately someone was in the way, so I had to leave the car there. To finish this off, she had to call a member of her family to come down, go into the passenger side, squeeze over to the driver's side, and move the car. As they did that, I, th <laughs> I thanked them for their efforts, jumped in my car, and drove away. That's what you get for being a butthole. It always amazes me how nice people are involving car stories. When that lady came back, I'd be tempted to be like, Oh man, you should have seen it. A couple of street hooligans came by and totally keyed up your car. I tried to stop them, but they got away. So sorry, lady. Our next Reddit post is from random username. During the seventh grade, I had a history teacher, Mr. G, that wouldn't really let students go to the bathroom after he put large restrictions on bathroom usage. I was kind of pissed, but there wasn't anything that I could do about it. So one day during class, I just really, really had to fart. I didn't want to do it in class, so I asked Mr. G if I could do it in the bathroom, but he wouldn't let me. I asked him again, but he just told me to sit down. Little old me was pretty mad that my teacher was putting restrictions on my bladder. I was so mad that I did as he told me to. However, before I did, I asked him one more time, and he still dismissed me. So I went to my desk, and then I farted. It was glorious. <laughs> it was the most gaseous and loudest fart I had ever let out. And after I farted, people had to cover their noses with their shirts because it was so smelly. Even Mr. G did, and everyone in the room was so disgusted by what just transpired. Afterwards, with a smirk on my face, I turned to Mr. G and asked him again if I could go to the bathroom. <laughs> he then blushed and said I could. And after that day, during next period, he then lifted the restrictions he put upon us. Then, Rudbeck of Rudbeck asked down in the comments, Please tell me you stared into his eyes and looked deep into his soul while letting it rip. And OP replies, Maybe a little. That was r slash petty revenge, and if you like this content, then please let me know by hitting that like button because it really helps my channel grow. 